play and call it work. Mini War Gaming's Warhammer 40k Battle Reports. Hello everybody and welcome to the Codex Craft Worlds review. The Elder Codex is here. I'm going to open it up and go through just about everything in this book that you might want to see. So I will try to cover absolutely everything in this book that's new and different and talk about a few things that stuck up my mind as I just flipped through it. But I will go over all the things we have, Warlord traits, a lot of stratagems. Now, uh, normally I kind of skip over a lot of the stratagems, but I'm going to read them to you this time because... I've already played a couple of games with this book, and I noticed that I was using the stratagems a lot. There are actually a lot of really good stratagems in here. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, some special abilities right off the bat. We do gain a new ability called the Path of Command, which uh, is on your Autark. It allows you to reroll ones to hit when you're within six of your Autark. But it also gives the ability to roll a d6 for each command point spent on a stratagem. If you roll a six, you get that command point back immediately, which is actually, didn't expect it, but it's a quite a nice little buff. It makes you might want to bring an Autark, but the reroll ones is quite nice, especially for an army that's going to be shooty or typically shooty, unless you're built hand. But even that play is pretty shooty as well. So that was a, a new ability added there. You still got your battle focus, which is move and, sorry, advance and shoot as if you did not move as long as it's not a heavy weapon. And you still have Ancient Doom. So when charging or charged by Slanesh, uh, we rolled a hit in the fight phase, the first round. But you have to add one to morale test, so it's a buff and a minus against Slanesh. That was one of the abilities I noticed that was new to the book. And another one, another one I think most of you expected. I know I knew this was coming. I'm going to read it right off for you, if I can find the page. Mm, no. Basically, it's your troop choices have what, if you played 7th edition, an objective secured type ability. So, the path to war. If your army is battleforged, all troop units in the craft world detachment gain this ability. Um, a unit is in range of objective, will control that objective even if the enemy has more models in range of it than you do. You still control it if your troop choices are on it, unless they have the similar ability than it's whoever has the most models. That one's kind of expected. Another one they added here is Heroes of Legend. So when you pick your craft world, which are all actually quite good, um, you can still have any of the Phoenix Lords in your craft world detachment and have it still count as your craft world. So they're not going to break your actual craft world for you. I'm going to flip through a few of the units as I go through them. We have a lot more psychic powers. I'll go through all of them. Uh, nothing I saw as a big change through all the units, except for a couple. we got anything but characters here. The one that I wanted to see, there's, there's one that I thought was, was really big, and it's Wraith Guard and Wraith Blades. So they're back up to Toughness 6. Uh, not Toughness 5 anymore, they still have their 3 wounds and their 3 up armor save. But Toughness 6 is actually a really big deal. Laz guns are wounding them on 6s now, um, and Heavy Bolters are wounding them on 5s now instead of 4s. And that, I think is actually a huge deal. I don't know if they needed that buff, but it is a nice one. Uh, the Wraith Lord, he is up to Toughness 8 again. So both guns are only wounding them on 6s instead of 5s, which is a Big deal for him. So I think the, yeah, the Wraith Lord definitely, I really want him to be Toughness 8. I'm glad he got, he, I'm glad he got Toughness 8 back. So that one I'm a big one of four. I'm all for that one. Uh, and last one I noticed, I don't know why this one's the case, but if you remember my last review of the index of the Craft World Eldar, I said the Hemlock Wraith Fighter has two weapons that auto hit. Yet, when it gets wounded, it loses ballistic skill. So I assumed that there was a misprint that those weapons weren't supposed to be an auto hit. Uh, so they fixed that problem in this book. They just took out the losing ballistic skill in the damage table. So clearly they meant for it to auto hit. So the, the heavy D scythe, two of them on the flyer, is assault D3. But now it's up to strength 12, minus four, two damage. I'm gonna double check that it, didn't, it wasn't strength 12 before. No, it was only strength 10, yeah. So yeah, it, did, it is up to strength 12. Um, that's not that big a deal. But you're wounding toughness six on twos. 
Yeah, Hemlock got better. Oh, and slightly cheaper. Point costs across the board are you know slightly cheaper all the way through. Just I know my first game that's in the vault right now. You, you see me play the. Oh, I'm gonna read this so I don't mispronounce it, which I know I'm going to. Alley Talk. I played the Alley Talk um, Craft World, and I was able to get a battalion. Sorry, brigade. Able to get a brigade very easily with this book. So I'll point cost, they're not drastically down, but they'll get tweaked. But we saw the same thing happen with the Space Marines and the Chaos Space Marines. And probably, I think Ashmole Term as well, and I'm assuming Grey Knights as well. All the point costs just came down just a little bit. So those are all the changes to the actual um, flipping through the units that kind of stuck out at me. All the big changes to this book come with the stratagems that are amazing, the craft world attributes, which are amazing, the relics, which are actually pretty okay, um, warlord traits, all good, like it's all really good stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the non, I'm gonna go through all the generic stuff first, and then I'll talk about the individual craft world things. So we'll start off with stratagems. Uh, the first one, uh, one command point, it's called matchless agility. Uh, use a stratagem before moving in a Syriani unit from the army in the movement phase. If the unit advances, you don't roll six, you just add six to their advance. Now, in the g a game I played, I thought about using this for um, my Wraith, my Wraith Guard. And I thought they couldn't do it because they don't have a Syriani, but they do. So you can have your Wraith Guard with their six inch range, sorry, their eight inch range D sides or their 12 inch range uh, Wraith Cannons. Uh, they move five and they can auto advance six. Uh, really getting them in range for one command point. It's great for all the Eldar, but it really shines with the, uh, the Wraith Guards. Wraith Guards? Wraith Guard. I thought that, that's the first one. I thought that was amazing. I actually want to use it a lot. I don't know if I actually did end up using it in the game because I thought I couldn't on the Wraith Guard I had, but uh, you could definitely see value to that one. Especially if you get an objective or whatnot. Next one, Celestial Shield, shield is one point. Uh, using the shooting phase, a friendly guardian unit is chosen as a target for, for attack. That unit has a four up invulnerable save for the rest of that shooting phase. So you have a guardian unit, you want to keep them alive, you can give them a four up invuln for one command point. Not terrible. Now, the next one I actually use in one of my games coming up, but there, there's two stratagems that are similar, but they negate each other, so you can use one or the other. One's called Cloud Strike, and the other's called Webway Strike. You can't use Cloud Strike and Webway Strike, you gotta pick one or the other. So Cloud Strike, use a stratagem during deployment if you have not used a Webway Strike stratagem this battle. You can set up an Assyriani vehicle from your army that can fly, and they all can fly, right? Every one of them flies, yeah. Uh, in the clouds, instead of placing the battlefield, it can descend at the end of your movement phases, set it up anywhere in the battlefield more than nine away from enemy units. If you use this strategy, I'm going to transport all units embarked inside it, remain so when it's set up in the clouds. That is amazing for one stratagem. Now, it doesn't say you can only do this once. So you can do it with as many as vehicles and, um, uh, infantry or whatever, and so you can have Wraith Guard inside of a, uh, a Wave Serpent. Deep striking, deep striking, web weight cloud striking, hiding up in the clouds, dropping down for one command point, you do as many times as you want. And getting stratagem points, command points, uh, in your list is quite easy. I found that I had more in my Elder games than I've had in any other game I've previously played. So the counter to that one, the other one is the Webway Strike. It is a one cost or a three cost, but this one can only be used once. You can't do it on multiple units. So use a strategy to deploy a unit you have not used, if you have not used a Cloud Strike. Uh, you can spend one command point to set up one Assyriani infantry or one biker unit from your army in the Webway. Um, if you spend three, you can set up two armies in the Webway, two units in the Webway instead. Uh, you and the webway can emerge at the end of your movement phase and set up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than nine inches away from the enemy. So you can have vehicles up in the sky with, with wep guys inside of them or not, or have infantry by themselves. I had in one of my game, I had um, uh, fire dragons for one command point using the webway strike hiding up in the... Um, well, in the webway, ready to deep strike. Now, I could at the time, I could have spent two more command points, three command points to put Fugen up there with him. 
Um, I found a way, I found a reason not to while we were deploying, but the intention was I knew I was gonna spend three command points to have Fugan and Fire Dragons as deep strike and melt somebody's vehicles. That I think is, these two are among the, my favorite in the whole book and they're all, like they're, they're, they're all good. I'm gonna keep on going. Uh, Treasures of the Craft Roll, it's again, it's a one point or a three point. Use the stratagem before battle. Your army can have one extra remnant of glory for one command point, so an extra relic, or two extra rem remnants of glory for three command points. They must be different and on different characters. You only use a stratagem once per battle. <clears throat> if you want, you want a bunch of uh, relics, which are nice, uh, yeah, spend them up or not, whatever. Next we got forewarned two command points. Use the stratagem immediately if your opponent sets up a unit arriving from the battlefield as reinforcements within sight of one of your craft world units that it itself is within six of a Farseer. You can immediately shoot at that enemy unit as if it were your shooting phase. So, yeah, yeah. You're just gonna be in line, keep a unit next to, like say Dark Reapers within six of your Farseer. They can see somebody coming in from reserve, or right, reinforcements, bam. Two command points. It's it's two for a reason. It's really good. Uh, the great enemy one command point. You can use a stratagem when a friendly Assyriani unit is chosen to fight. If you do so, you can reroll any failed wound rolls for unit if the target of the attack has the Slanesh keyword. Sure. Concordance of power again one command point. Uh, the psycho. The Psyker in a Warlock Conclave can focus and direct the psychic powers that unleash... Oh, I'm reading the fluff part. Use the stratagem when the Assyrian Warlock Conclave successfully manifests a rune of battle psychic power. You can double the range of that power when manifested. Uh, I didn't read... I didn't notice the rune... Sorry, the rune of battle node. I tried to make my smite, smite double range. That didn't work. So any of the rune of battle powers, you can double the range for one command point, and that's useful. You're gonna be, if you have Warlocks on the table, you, oh, it's gotta be a Warlock Conclave. It's a group of Warlocks, but if you have them on the table, you will be using the stratagem. It's quite good. We next we got Unparalleled Mastery, one command point. Use this stratagem when the Syriani Farseer successfully manifests their last psychic power in a psychic phase. The power, the Psyker could attempt to manifest additional psychic power this turn. One command point to cast one more psychic power if you succeeded in your last one. Not bad. Uh, two command points for feigned retreat. I've used this one. So use this stratagem if an Assyrian unit in your army falls back. It can shoot and charge next as normal in the upcoming turns. Got some bikes going outside. I don't know if you can hear all that. Okay, the next one is Linked Fire. Uh, Chris had this book in his hand. Many working with Chris had this book in his hand before I did. He saw this one. He fell in love with this one. One command point. Use a stratagem when you select a target for a Fire Prism's Prism Cannon. Oh, I should talk about that. Actually, there's one more change I forgot to mention. The Fire Prism itself, uh, similar to the Astral Militarum upgrade to Battle Cannon, or sorry, to Lehman Russes, if the Fire Prism moves under half its movement distance, it can fire its Prism Cannon twice. That's actually a pretty big buff. And the, like, the Fire Prism is like 140 points, I believe. It's so cheap for a tank, it's quite good, and it has a nice stratagem. Uh, so link fire, I'll read it again. Uh, use a stratagem when you select a target for your fire prism's prism cannon. Do not resolve that weapon's attacks until the end of the phase. Until then, any craft world fire prisms in your army can link fire with it with that fire prism if it is visible to that fire prism. If they do so, when firing their prism cannons, they must target the unit that the first fire prism targeted with its prism cannon, ignoring range and visibility. And rerolling field to hit into wound rolls. At the end of the phase, resolve the prism cannon shots from the first fire prism, rerolling failed to hit into wound rolls as, as if it was one of the other fire prisms. To explain that, because I have to read it a few times myself to get it. So I have three fire prisms. Let's say one right here in the middle, and one, another one over here. They're behind buildings, they can't see nothing. The first fire prison picks his target. Uh, you're telling you're telling you can use this ability on like a big baddie. Let's say we're firing at a, a pyramidal knight. So fire prism one picks the, the knight as his target. He spends one command point, but he doesn't shoot. So fire prism number two, as long as he can see this fire prism, he doesn't need to. He does not need to see the um, wraith knight. He fires his fire his fire prism cannon at that wraith knight, rerolling to hit and to wound. 
then this one can do it. Again, he does not need to see the target because the first guy can see the target. He rerolls the hit and to wound. Then you finish your shooting phase, and this guy then fires at that target if it's still alive, rerolling to hit and to wound. Um, it forces you to pick your target and then shoot at it last, which is something I don't necessarily like, but thinking about it more and more, um, if you have like a really like a, a Titan or like a really big baddie on the field, uh, I would use this every time. Uh, having those strength 12 single shots, we're going to hit in a wound. One command point. One command point. Pretty good. Uh, so next one's two command points for lightning fast reactions. I've used this one a couple times. Use this strategy when a friendly Assyriani infantry unit or a friendly Assyriani unit with the fly keyword is chosen as a target for an enemy attack in the shooting or fight phase. Subtract one to hit rolls that target that unit for the rest of that phase. So I, you, you go ahead and target one of my units, and I spend two command points, and they're minus one to hit. That's two, it's, it's two command points. There's a lot of command points for minus one to hit, but that's gonna stack with some other things later on. That's actually, we'll get back to that one. It sounds pretty good in its own. Um, it gets better. Next one we got Supreme Disdain, a one command point. Use a strategy when a Seer Gun user is chosen to fight in the fight phase. Each time you make a hit roll of six plus from model during this phase, it can immediately make an extra attack against the same target using the same weapon. These extra attacks themselves don't generate more attacks. Uh, it's one command point. I can definitely see it being used uh, whether you roll sixes or not. Uh, after that, we have one command point for overloaded energy field projectors. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase. When you do so, pick a friendly wave serpent that discharged its serpent shields in an earlier turn. It can immediately discharge its serpent shield again. Free mortal wounds, one command point. Another one, one command point for the Starhawk missiles. You can use this stratagem just for any Assyriani infantry model from your army attacks a unit that can fly with an Eldar missile launcher, so the, unit, the target has to fly, I didn't notice that. Well, you can only make a single hit roll with this weapon, however, add one to the hit roll. If it hits, the target suffers D3 mortal wounds. It's an anti-air missile. Then we got Seer Council. Uh, use a stratagem if a psychic, in your psychic phase, if a craft world far seer is within six of a friendly craft world warlock unit, you can add one to the results of any psychic test you take for the two units the rest of that phase. Yeah, if you're gonna be psycher heavy and they're close enough to each other, yeah, you can definitely see using that one. Another one for one point is a great one, fire and fade. You can use this stratagem after, fire, after a friendly Assyriani, Assyriani unit shoots in the sh shooting phase. Whoa, tongue twister for me apparently. If you do so, the unit can immediately move seven as if it were the movement phase. It cannot advance as part of this move. However, it can charge the same turn it does so. You can shoot, move again, hide after that, like hide, get a line of sight, or get closer to charge. Oh, sorry, cannot charge. But that's better. I noticed that. Okay, so it cannot charge. But either way, remember the old trick, the really annoying trick of scatter bikes. You find their target, shooting a bunch of times, and then moving out of the way. You know, that's back. That's back for one command point. Well, at least you only do it to one unit now, because you can't use the same command point, or same stratagem per phase in match play. And next, we got Runes of Witnessing for two command points. This stratagem is used at the start of any phase. Select a Farseer in your army. Until the end of your phase, you can reroll all Wounds of One for friendly craftful units of si within six of your Farseer. There is a few more before we get to the craft world. I can't say that word. I'm not gonna try to say it right now. For two command points, you have Phantasm. Use a stratagem to start of your first battle round, but before the first turn has begun, pick any three Assyrian units from your army that are on the battlefield. You can immediately remove these from the battlefield and set them up again as described in the deployment section of the mission you are playing. If you redeploy a transport, all units embarked inside it remain with it when you do so. So that is a uh, two command point to redeploy something. And the game is played right in the deployment phase now. So that, that yeah, that, that, I can see that one being used. Now, is the deployment phase a phase? Yeah, we call it deployment phase. I guess you can't use it more than once. Or can you? I'll have to look into that. If deployment phase, actually I'm gonna pull up right now. Can we just call it deployment phase?
No, because, yeah, it's like the, the uh, Raven Guard one. It's before the first battle round. So I guess you can use that more than once. Comment below if you disagree. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, you can use that more than once in a phase or at the beginning of the game. Next, we got Tears of Isha for two command points. Use this strategy at the start of your turn. Select a Wraith Construct model. It immediately regains D3 lost wounds. Two command points. Then we got... Uh, Vol's Might. Use this stratagem in the shooting phase if a support weapon from your army is within six of another friendly craft rolled support weapon. You can reroll wound rolls of one made for both support weapons. It can be pretty good. Uh, one command point to have a couple of your support weapons reroll rolls of one. And uh, the last one that is generic is actually quite good. Uh, it's three command points for the Avatar Resurgent. Use this stratagem in the fight phase if the Avatar of Cain is slain. Fight phase, so he has to die in the fight phase. Do not remove the avatar of Cain uh, as a casualty. Instead, roll d6 after the enemy unit has slew it, has resolved all of its attacks. The avatar of Cain remains on the battlefield with that many wounds remaining. So your avatar dies in the fight phase, you roll a die, you're back alive with d6 wounds. For three command points, I'd spend it every time. So that is it for stratagems. There was something else I noticed about Farseers, and I think Warlocks had it as well. I just want to double check that it is actually new. I probably should do this beforehand. But Farseers Ghost Helm, I think might be a little bit better now. Uh, yes, it is better now. So the Ghost Helm needs to ignore wounds uh, on a five up. Now the ghost helm is worded differently. Roll d6 whenever this model suffers a mortal wound, adding three to the roll if the mortal wound was afflicted by the result of a psyker suffering perils of the warp. On a five up, the wound is ignored. So, yeah, you, you peril, you ignore it on a two plus. I think the warlocks have it too. No warlocks? No. Nope, just as far as here. Okay, Warlord traits. Let's go over the generic Warlord traits. Uh, we got Ambush of Blades. Each time you make a hit roll of six or a friendly craft roll to you within six of your Warlord in the fight phase, the armor penetration characteristic of the attack is increased by one. Next, we have Iron Distant Events. The enemy cannot fire Overwatch at your Warlord. Um, Falcon Swiftness, add two to your Warlord's move characteristic. Fate's Messenger, add one to the wound characteristic of your Warlord. In addition, roll die each time your Warlord loses a wound. On a sixth, the wound does not lose the wound. Everybody has that one. Mark of the Incomparable Hunter, your Warlord can select enemy characters in the shooting phase, even if they're not the closest enemy model. He's a, he's a sniper. And Seer of Shifting Vector, once per battle, you can reroll a single to hit, to wound, save roll, psychic test, or deny the witch test made by your Warlord. I think the Craftfold specific ones are better. But we'll get to them. Uh, we got lots of, of relics. We have a pistol, a uh, gem that when your character dies, uh, a friend or foe unit within three of the model will suffer some more D3 mortal wounds. If they suffer at least one mortal wound, that character comes back to life with a wound. You have the, I can't say his name, Fauchu. The wing is back. You have 12 inch fly to your character. You have a fire saber. It's plus one strength, a minus four AP, a one damage. If you roll six to wound, it does one mortal wound. Um, yeah, a few, a few swords. Um, there's an attack only one that subtracts one doll hit rolls if you're targeting that model. Actually, I, I use that one. It's quite nice. Um, there's an all the way one. You add one to the psychic test when attempting to manifest a smite power. A uh, special lance for Sam Han. Yeah, just a bunch of, and Bill 10 has another blade, but the Fire Saber is better. So just a bunch of generic, nothing really stands out as amazing for the relics. I'm gonna go over the psychic abilities, runes of discipline, and then runes of fate, and then I'll get into the craft world stuff that's actually. Okay, so Runes of Battle, Conceal Reveal has changed. It is no longer casted in the Psyker and every unit within three of them, uh, every infantry unit within three of them is minus one to hit. That's not the thing anymore. Now it is uh, Warp Charge of Six, Conceal, choose a friendly Assyriani infantry or biker unit within 18 of the Psyker. That opponent must, your opponent must attract one to all hit rolls for ranged weapons that target that unit until the next Psychic phase. Reveal takes away an, uh, your opponent's cover save. If, if the target has to be within 18. Embolden Horrify. Um, so yeah, actually remember, Conceal doesn't doesn't target the Psyker. Um, it just targets a unit. 
and the hemlock can no longer take conceal. You can only take the reveal. Well, you can only use the reveal half of that power for the hemlock, or all these only the latter half. So we have embolden horrify. Um, choose a friendly Assyriani or biker with an 18 the psyker. Add two to the leadership characteristic. Horrify enemy unit must subtract one to the leadership. Enhanced strain, casting of seven, a Syriani infantry or biker with an 18 the psyker, add one to the hit rolls in the fight phase. Uh, drain, your opponent must subtract one to hit rolls based for the unit in the fight phase until your next uh, psychic phase. Then you have protect jinx. So protect is add one to the saving throws for a unit, a Syriani biker or infantry only with an 18. And jinx is subtract one to the saving throws made. Jinx does not have stipulation, so pick a target unit and they uh, subtract one to all saving throws. 18 in this range. Quicken Restrain, again, seven to cast. Quicken, a Syriani infantry or biker with an 18 of the Psyker can immediately move as if it were their movement phase. You cannot use Quicken on a single unit more than once per psychic phase. So you get a free move with Quicken. That, I think, is... <sighs> Protect Jinx is, a, is really good. Conceal is really good. But that Quicken... I don't know, that one might be the one, depending on your play style. Um, restrain, choose an enemy unit with an 18 of the Psyker. Your opponent must have its move characteristic for all models in that unit until the next Psychic phase. So if you want to slow your opponent down from charging you, if you're really shooty, that one's quite good as well. And Empower Enervate, so Empower is Syriani Infantry or Biker with an 18, add one to the wound rolls in the fight phase. And then Enervate, uh, your opponent must subtract one to all wound rolls in the fight phase. Decent runes of discipline, runes of fate. These are the farcier ones. Guide, um, pick a Syrian unit with a 24. You can reroll fail to hit rolls. That unit's range weapons. The next psychic phase, doom, pick an enemy unit with a 24. You can reroll fail to wound rolls against that unit until your next psychic phase. Fortune, uh, 24 inch range. Whenever you suffer a wound, roll d6 on a five plus. The wound's ignored. I think it's exactly the same as it used to be. Executioner, uh, seven to cast, manifest the nearest, nearest enemy unit with an 18 of the Psyker suffers D3 mortal wounds. It's like smite. If if the model in the target unit is slain as a result of this, the target unit immediately suffers an additional D3 mortal wounds. So if you have a one wound unit, like one wound models in the unit, you're, you're going to be doing two D3 mortal wounds with Executioner. Pretty good. Uh, Will of Assyrian, uh, charge casting value of five. Friendly Assyrian units automatically pass morale test while they're within six of the Psyker until the next Psychic phase. In addition, you can add one to all the nine of the Witch tests for that Psyker. And Mind War, Mind War. Uh, casting of seven, choose an enemy character with an 18 of the Psyker. Each player rolls a d6, adds their leadership characteristic. If your opponent scores higher or the score is drawn, nothing happens. If you score higher, the target suffers the mortal wounds equal to the difference. Uh, I think Executioner is really good. Uh, Guide, Doom, Fortune, Executioner are, are the ones. Okay, now let's get to what everybody really cares about, the craft worlds. So I want to say this. All of them are good, but one sticks out. I think you're going to see a lot of Blue Eldar coming up. So I'll read that one last. We'll start with Althway. Roll a d6 each time a model with this attribute loses a wound. On a 6, that wound is ignored. So everything across the army ignores damage on a 6. Now, I played Iron Warriors in 7th edition back when they had that rule, and you roll plenty of 6s. That, that, it's actually a pretty decent, um, sounds lackluster, but you, it, it, it's pretty good. Uh, if you have a similar ability like uh, Spirit Stones, then you, 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 you only use one or the other. So you, they don't stack. Uh, their Warlord trait. If your army is battleforged and your warlord is on the battlefield, roll d6 at the start of each of your turn. You know, each turn, sorry, yours and your opponent. On a six, you gain a command point. So all the way, not terrible. Ayandin, this one, um, this one so didn't seem super, super good, but some people might really like it. A uh, unit with this attribute could never lose more than one model as a result of a single failed morale test. So you get your Wraith Guard, which if you're playing on the end and you probably bring a Wraith Guard, you're never going to have more than one flea, but I mean, I don't think that's going to happen that often anyway. Uh, in addition, a unit with the damage chart that has this attribute doubles the wounds it takes before it moves on to the next bracket. Uh, so it's pretty good if you have a Wraith Knight with the point, or even a vehicle. A vehicle takes uh, twice as many, many wounds before it loses ballistic skill. Not bad for a 
uh, free ability. Their warlord trait, Enduring Resolve, your warlord can attempt to deny one psychic power in each psychic phase. If your warlord is a psychic, you can attempt to deny one additional one. Not bad. Okay, the next two, I don't know which one's better. I think they're both really, really good. So Semhan, you can reroll failed charge rolls for this for units with this attribute. So Chris and I were talking about this one. He plays Semhan. They're not really a, an assault army, but I guess they can be. I mean, they get a, a special assault lance for their relic. So yeah, okay, so you reroll charges. Um, in addition, biker units with this attribute do not suffer penalties to hit rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons. So all you Eldar players with your scatter bikes, you're probably playing Sam Han, unless you don't want to uh, rip them off and put on their uh, shuriken. So yeah, all those scatter bikes are hitting on threes now. They can move in on threes. And with that stratagem, they can move again. So yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of Sam Han just for that reason alone. It's the bike army, right? You want scatters? You got scatter. Uh, same on World Trade, Wild Rider Chieftain. Oh, actually, okay, I'll finish up. Uh, whenever your roller piles in and performs a heroic intervention, it can move three towards the nearest enemy character rather than the nearest enemy model. In addition, your roller chooses a target the same enemy character with all their close combat attacks. You can add one to the roller's attack characteristics to the end of the phase. So it's about assaulting. Uh, there's actually stratagems for those two uh, craft rolls as well, which I will go over. So we have, let's we'll do all the way real quick. One command point. Use a stratagem at the start of the shooting or fight phase. Pick an all the way guardian unit in your army. Add one to all hit rolls made for that unit until the end of the phase. Not bad for one command point. Uh, and then um, Sam Han, where'd you go? Semhan. Uh, one command point. Use a stratagem when a Semhan biker unit advances. The unit can still charge in the same turn and can reroll hit rolls of one in that fight phase. Uh, and a end ends. Uh, use a stratagem at the, it's one command point. Use a stratagem at the start of your turn. When you do so, pick a end end spirit seer from your army. Until your next turn, the range of that model's spirit mark ability increases from 6 to 12. Um, and the ability allows friendly and and wraith, con wraith contract units to reroll all failed hits instead of ones. So, especially if you're using those um, wraith cannons, the wraith cannons, you want to use that one stratagem or the auto advance six. Um, hit, this will be hit on fours because they're assault weapons, and this thing will allow you to reroll those hits if they're within if the target is within twelve of a spirit seer. Not bad for one command point. So yeah, back to Simon. So you have a bike army that wants to be in combat, but gives you really good shooting with scatter bikes without a penalty. Mobile shooting. So that one was on the fence to which one would be better, that one or Bill Tan, which is this called the Swordwind. Add one to the leadership characteristic of all aspect warriors with this attribute. I didn't think that was that good until I, I played a game with Bill Tan, and that came up a lot. I I. So many times I had my uh, aspects not fleeing because I rolled just enough, or I would have had one fleeing every time. So yeah, leadership nine for all your aspects is really good. Uh, in addition, you can reroll hit rolls of one for shuriken weapons used by this uh, used by units with this attribute. So your 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 dire avengers, your guardians, your your striking scorpions, your banshees, all of these things have shuriken weapons. And you roll ones. Like it's it's a free re-roll ones across the board for all your Bill Tan stuff. It, I, I've, I've used it in the game already. I really like it. Uh, their Warlord trait and their... Oh, same page. Bill Tan. Oh, yeah. So the Warlord trait is actually one of my favorites, too. It's called Natural Leader. At the start of the shooting phase, pick a friendly Bill Tan unit within three of your Warlord. Uh, it can re-roll all failed the hits for that unit in that phase. Um, yeah, just shooting phase. So, as I talked about earlier about having that one stratagem where you can strike, deep strike two units, I was going to put Fugin and the Fire Dragons to go hunt something down. Well, I didn't have to spend two extra command points to deep strike Fugin as well because my Autark had wings. I was able to deep strike in with my uh, Fire Dragons and he just picked them to have the ability to reroll. So, that was a really, really, really powerful Assassination of a force. I love that command. I love that warlord trait. I'm a shooter guy. I'm not a big combat guy. I got into a lot of combat with my built in, but they did well in both phases. They did mo they did a bulk of the work in the shooting phases, and I uh, shooting phases, but I was primarily combat. Now we're gonna talk about the one which I think is gonna get a lot of attention. 
So all of the craft worlds sound pretty good, and they're all playable. None of them's like, God, ah, it's garbage, I don't want to do that. They're all good. But I think Ali Talk just edges it out when you stack a bunch of abilities. So Ali Talk, it's called Field Craft. Your opponent must subtract one from any to hit rolls that target a unit with this attribute at range of 12 or more. You have an entire army, like, like Raven Guard for Space Marines have this ability, but only affects infantry, a bikers, and dreadnoughts. All your vehicles, everything, if you're over 12 inches away, minus one to hit. I'm gonna go over a couple things before I get back to how everything stacks together. Remember that one um, trait I, gave, uh, I talked about, lightning fast reflexes, additional minus one to hit. Uh, flyers are already minus one to hit. You can have a hemlock. It's just going to be sitting at minus two to hit most of the time. Your crimson hunters can sit in your backfield and just fly back and forth and probably never have anything better than, like, your opponent will almost always be minus two to hit that flyer. Your warp spiders um, can roll a pair of dice to do a flicker jump when targeted, and they're going to be minus one to hit. So you're going to be minus two to hit. Use a command point, they're minus three to hit. There are ways of getting a few units to minus four to hit. Now you're stacking uh, conceal, uh, the unit's ability, um, and then the, the, um, the stratagem. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of ways of playing, of mixing the minus one to hits. Rangers um, are troop choices, and I use them in the battle report that's in the vault right now, connected, connected to this video, I brought a Brigade, is it? Yeah, Brigade. My six troop choices were Rangers. I did Alley Talk. Rangers come in stock with a minus one to hit. So over 12 inches away, they're minus two to hit. Uh, I can conceal them and make them minus three to hit. Uh, you can use the Warlord trait and make them minus four to hit. Or not Warlord trait, uh, the Stratagem. There is so many things that stack with it. More so, could we, this world, this uh, trait, this craft world trait, we've seen it as a chapter trait. We've seen it as a forge world. We've seen it as a legion for chaos. It's not new, but it's really good in this book because there's a bunch of ways of stacking with it. Like again, we have command abilities, psychic powers, special unit, unit, special rules on units. It affects your flyers. Wait, my lion. Flyers have craft world. Yeah, of course you do. So yeah, your flyers are almost always be minus two to hit. And if you get targeted and you really don't want them to die, spend two command points, then you need another minus one. Now you can't target that flyer with uh, conceal because it only targets infantry and bikers. But there, there's, this is gonna be a real annoying one. This one I think is just it's edging everything out. Uh, let's talk about their um, Stratagem. It's for one command point. It's for Pathfinders. Use the stratagem at the start of an enemy shooting phase. Pick an Alitalk Ranger unit from your army that is in cover. Attacks that target that unit this phase will only hit on six irrespective modifiers. So I, I at one point um, in the game in the vault right now, which I think you should watch, it was, it was against Raven Guard, who also had the minus one to hit. So we're playing this whole game the whole time. Uh, I, he was... He was Going after one of my ranger units, and you can tell the way he was moving towards him, the way he had his guys on the table. And right away, start of the his shooting phase, one command point, that ranger you're going after, you only hit them on sixes. He had the twitcher's target for one command point. Uh, their warlord trait is as long as, as long as all friendly units within six of your warlord or alley talk, those units automatically pass the morale test. That can be okay, but I mean, they're probably not gonna be taking morale tests because they're gonna be so hard to hit. I think that one is. I think it's really good. I think it's really strong, potentially too strong. So back in early 8th edition that we're in right now, uh, every kind of looked at Eldar and like, okay, they're, they're pretty good and pretty playable, but they're no longer the cheese mongers they were in 7th. Um, let's see, after playing a bunch of games where, where these guys sit, they were dominating a lot of tournaments in 7th edition with their cheesy combinations. I'm not seeing a lot of crazy, crazy stuff other than the stacking of mice to hit with Alley Doc, if I'm saying that correctly. But whatever, solid book. Um, I'm working on some Lou Eldar right now. No, I'm not. Yeah, I think you're gonna see a lot of, uh, my predictions for this is a lot of Semhan and a lot of Alley Talk. But I think people are gonna like Bill Tan a lot too, or all, yeah, they're all pretty good, but Alley Talk, I think for me, is edging it out with, uh, like I said, all the ways of making your army. You know, you bring Rangers as your troop choices. You bring Hemlocks or Crimson Hunters or uh, Warp Spiders. All these units have minus one to hit in them one way or another. Uh, and then Warlocks to send out more mi uh, minus one to hits to protect the certain units. And then you got your uh, Wave Serpents that are gonna bring, um, 
vectored engines and only bring shuriken cannons. Because uh, shuriken cannons, they can bring three on the vehicle. They're assault weapons. And the vectored engines, uh, when the waste serpent advances, uh, they're minus one to hit. Now, it's an alley talk. If you're 12 inches away from your enemy, your waste serpent is minus two to hit um, before you're using stratagems. And you get still deploy your nine strength six shots hitting on fours. Yeah, there are ways of making some pretty, pretty annoying Alatoc armies. Um, I made one. It's in the vault right now. <laughs> so you can go ahead and watch that battle port right now that's in the vault. And I suggest you do. It's actually a quite a... Uh, it's a good game, I think. It's a really good game. So Alatoc is the first one I'm going to play right down the vault. I'm going to play two more next week. I'm going to have these up for you guys. Hopefully Monday, you should see them up Monday. I'm gonna do uh, Bill 10, because I already recorded it, and tomorrow I'm gonna record a Sam Han game. Uh, but by the time you see this video, you would have, I would have already have filmed it. So prepare for a Sam Han for the next video. I picked the three that I think are gonna be the most popular. Um, whether I'm right or not, we'll find out in the future. But if you wanna watch that battery report right now that's in the vault, if you're not already a vault member, you can click the link below and get yourself a seven day free subscription. It won't cost you anything. You can cancel right after, it won't cost you anything. Uh, you can pay through PayPal. Um, but I think you'll end up keeping your vault membership because once you get in there, you'll see there are literally hundreds, thousands of videos. We do reviews regularly, so there's extra stuff, extra content. And if you're a Silver Vault member, you also get to see uh, quick tips from Chris, who when I already talked to him, he's approached some Alley Talk quick tips because he knows those questions are coming in soon. So join me in the vault for that game, guys. I think you'll really like it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the review. And comment below, what do you guys think about all this stuff? Have you guys had a chance to look at this yet? Thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.